Wow. Uh, so the North American International Championships is going on right now. It's wrapping up. They're down to the final two players. One, uh, Stefan, who has been just amazing. When it, He's like the North American International Championship king. Like he has won multiple times already. And then you've got him against Andrew, who's just been having an amazing season. Really, I think this is only like his third year playing in Masters. And he's just been tearing it up ever since he entered into competitive Pokemon from a Master Division standpoint. Uh, should be a really fun matchup. The top eight was basically all Gardevoir. It was, uh, I think it was six Gardevoir decks. I think there were two Lost Zone decks and six Gardevoir decks. I could be wrong. You can correct me in the comment section down below. Uh, but the meta ended up being a lot of Lugia going into the tournament. And Lugia did okay, uh, but it ended up being uh, mostly Gardevoir that like ran away with the thing. Gardevoir with the addition of uh, Monkey Dory, which is a new card from uh, the Twilight Masquerade set that we just came out, really helped put it over the edge. Dragapult did not do as well as I think a lot of people were hoping it would do. Uh, Michael Pramowat, Tord Reklov, they did really well with uh, Dragapult with uh, Charizard. Like that went pretty well. Uh, ended up getting them into day two and finishing with decent records. But overall, it just ended up being Gardevoir, uh, which took down pretty much everything. And we'll see what happens later on today. It's not a mirror match, which is great. It's Gardevoir versus Lost Zone. But uh, very interesting to see the format not really be impacted too much. A little bit by Twilight Masquerade, but not too much. Gardevoir obviously has been around for a while. Came out with Scarlet and Violet Base, so it's been around for a little bit over a year. It'll stay in format for quite some time, but that seems to be the deck to beat as we move into the World Championships. A lot of interesting things if you've never played uh, competitive Pokemon before. A lot of interesting things at the North American International Championships this weekend. Unfortunately, a lot of slow playing going on. It's very important if you've never played in a competitive event, especially with Pokemon on beefing up their prizing structure big time. I mean, international events, huge cash prizes. Same thing with Worlds. Regionals got a huge buff at the beginning of the season. So if you haven't played competitive Pokemon, there's some really great cash prizes you can get. But obviously, just like what we've seen with the Pokemon card market, uh, when you get opportunity, unfortunately, some people take advantage of those situations. So a lot of uh, DQ is going on, a lot of bad, uh, unfortunate stuff going on this weekend. But for the most part, it seems like a really well-run event. It was in uh, New Orleans. So a different location. It seems like a lot of people really enjoy it there. So it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But the format is very, very fun to watch. Scarlet and Violet in general, obviously a very, very fun format. We talked about this last week when we were talking about uh, Paldea Evolved talked about Scarlet and Violet and how it seems like a lot of people are finally starting to catch up to how good Scarlet and Violet is. And we've been talking about it on this channel for a while about how great the storytelling is, how great the artwork is. Uh, it's just, it's a beautiful generation. And I understand that not everybody resonates with the new Pokemon and that always takes time uh, to get to. Uh, but the Paradox Pokemon that came out with Paradox Rift and then Temporal Forces were uh, fantastic. The future and the ancient uh, kind of gimmicks that they put into things have been really good. I'm very excited to see where Scarlet and Violet moves forward. The dark Pokemon possibility with the Team Rocket set is going to absolutely slap uh, as long as Pokemon does it right, right? Like, that's the big thing, as long as Pokemon does it right. Uh, but we're going to talk about Scarlet and Violet in today's video, specifically Special Illustration Rares, because like we've seen with a lot of alternate art, Special Illustration Rares really starting to rise, especially some of them. So we talked about this on Friday's video. We broke down rarities, we broke down pull rates, and if you haven't watched that video, it's chock full of just really important information about how rare a card possibly could be, how rare a specific rarity is, uh, because we've seen in certain certain sets like Obsidian Flames where technically a regular Art EX is a little bit more difficult to pull a specific one than like the Hyper Rare Charizard, the Gold Charizard. So things got really weird, which is why Pokemon decided, hey, we're probably going to change pull rates moving forward. It's just been, uh, it's been a very, very interesting interesting string of events when it comes to pull rates. And I know I obsess over pull rates. You don't necessarily need to do that, but I want to deliver uh, good information. I'm going to flip you guys around. We're going to talk about uh, these special illustration rares. And we're looking at three months of data because three months is really where things started to kind of change a lot for some of these cards. Um, usually we like to look at a, a full year's worth of data, but some of these cards are fairly new. So like Paldea, uh, Paldean Fates, for example, we're starting off looking at this Charizard EX uh, to see what it's done over the past three months. It really only has three months of data because Paldean Fates uh, only came out a few short months ago, but you can see it did
did drop down at one point in time to $100.99. At one point in time, it looked like this was going to be a sub $100 card, and now it's continued to grow. Now, Paldean Fates, a lot of people were excited about it with the introduction, reintroduction of Baby Shinies. Remember, that, that was the third set where we got Baby Shinies. We got Shiny Pokemon. We had Hidden Fates. Uh, we had Shining Fates, which ended up being printed just to Oblivion. And then we had Paldean Fates. But the thing is, Paldean Fates came out where Buzz had really simmered down. Not as much Buzz uh, for Paldean Fates than what we had for Shining Fates. So not as much product being opened. We also had Paradox Rift and Temporal Forces, which were kind of sandwiched around Paldean Fates. So there was a lot of other sets that were drawing attention. And when Paldean Fates came out, that was really around the time where we started seeing all of this talk and all this hype around Sword and Shield sets, especially the back half of Sword and Shield sets. So I do think Paldean Fates was probably open less than what it typically would have been if it came out as a main series set or even came out later once the Sword and Shield hype had slowed down a little bit or prior to the Sword and Shield hype really exploding with all those booster boxes kind of selling out. But Charizard EX has done extremely well. A lot of cards from Paldean Fates have, and we're going to talk about a couple of them in today's slideshow. Uh, but uh, March 12th, you can see it was at the top, right? Like 119.37. It had come down a little bit from where it was when Paldean Fates first released. It was trending downward uh, very, very dramatically. It looked like it was going to fall below $100 extremely quickly, uh, but uh, didn't end up happening. And it started going the other direction. You can see it blew back up to about 113, 114 uh, before the middle of May, where it started coming down again. And now it's kind Kind of retraced again and it's moved up to about $115.15. So it's already about 11% above where it was at the beginning of April and continuing to trend in the upward direction. Uh, here's the Raging Bolt EX and we can talk about this one all day. Raging Bolt has been up and down. It's been manipulated. It's been bought out. It's been talked up for competitive play uh, and ended up doing okay this weekend, but not great. Raging Bolt and Teal Mask Ogre Pond did okay in, in NAIC, but not great. And you can see uh, when it came out in March, it was only about a $50 card. So there it is at its three month low of $50.07. Started blowing up. That was when we had those buyouts happen with a lot of temporal forces. Remember when we were looking at pull rate data on Friday, temporal forces with the pull rate change, a unique specific uh, special illustration rare, uh, about 750 packs it's going to take to pull one of them. So a lot more difficult as far as pull rates go than what we've seen in previous sets uh, with the Scarlet and Violet generation. So Paldea evolved even a lot less packs, Scarlet and Violet base, Obsidian Flames, a lot less packs to open up a special illustration rare, especially a specific one, a unique one, uh, than what we would see from Temporal Forces, Twilight Masquerade, even Paradox Rift to some extent. Uh, this one started retracing middle of May, went back down to about $50. The buyouts had kind of simmered down. Then all of a sudden, uh, we had a tournament that happened over in LA, the regional tournament. Twilight Masquerade came out. People were like, well, Ogre Pond's going to be great with Raging Bolt. Let's buy every copy of Raging Bolt and hype this deck up. And it ended up getting hyped up and it did okay. There were some decks on stream that were doing extremely well but did not perform nearly as well as Gardevoir uh, even as we talked about the Dragapult deck uh, there's been some like Reggie Drago that did okay Snorlax Stall did okay uh, but Raging Bolt just did not live up to the hype and because of that now it's going to start coming back down a little bit it's still sitting at $92.38 so it's a little bit off of its uh, three month high of 104.68 but if you have been patient uh, continue to be patient it seems like this card is trending downward again here is the Mew EX the Bubble Mew EX this one may continue to trend upward. This is a beautiful card. Fan favorite for a lot of people. One of the most popular cards in Paldean Fates for sure. In March of uh, March 12th, it had dropped down to a three-month low of 73.26. Again, we thought we saw a lot of Paldean Fates cards really starting to trend downward, uh, but then started shooting up. We, we then started seeing a lot of Paldean Fates uh, kind of re recuperate some of its attention, uh, and this Mew EX was, is definitely one of them. Look at trending uh, in the upper direction uh, for pretty much all of April. Hit about 85 $86 before coming back down again and now trending back up again. It's high point of $88.75. It just recently hit, but this is about 20% above where it was at the beginning of March. Usually when we see a set release, we see a lot of these cards really start trending downward for quite some time and it takes a couple of months for them to rebound or to level off a little bit and Mew EX uh, doing things a little bit differently where it did bottom out it looks like and now it's starting to trend in the upward direction but a beautiful card sitting at $85.25 currently here's the Iron Crown EX also starting to trend back up a little bit, this is another one just like what we saw with the Raging Bolt now this one did have the hype of competitive play at the beginning, future decks, ancient decks uh, had a lot of hype behind them 
in March. Uh, this card was trending upward, obviously getting bought out, jumped up to about $100. It hit $97.45 and then pretty much spent the next two months trending downward all the way down to $48.99. Uh, so it hit that three-month low really at the end of end of May. It hit really close to that three-month low, about $55 there. And now it started trending back upwards again, sitting at $80.38. But again, once we start realizing how difficult these pull rates are, 750-ish packs to pull a specific unique one, all of a sudden there's a lot more attention. Obviously, there's a lot more attention being paid to Scarlet and Violet right now. And because of that, you see some of these cards, which have lower quantities listed on websites like TCG Player, on web websites like eBay, starting to trend in the upper direction. Very cool artwork. Like I said, I really do enjoy the Paradox Pokemon. Roaring Moon, this one was another one. Perfect example of a card that got bought out. This one in Paradox Rift got bought out right away, jumped over $100, and then steadily declined for quite some time. Middle of March, it was sitting very close to that three-month low, right around $52, $53, relatively flat then after that. It did have a brief period of time at the end of April where it jumped back up to about $60, uh, but then dropped back down May 26. So we're talking two weeks ago, uh, dropped back down to that uh, six-month low, that three-month low of $52.77. And then if you look at what's happened just over the past couple of weeks, a really cool-looking card, uh, the Paradox Roaring Moon there with the Screamtail in there. Very, very cool, uh, but shot up like crazy. Now it's sitting at $70.60 and again, continuing to trend in the upper direction as more and more attention is paid to this. I really wanted to throw this Charizard EX in there because uh, I think it's important to realize that this card... Even though uh, it's a Charizard, right? Even though it's a special illustration rare, uh, much easier to pull. This reminds me so much of the Charizard VMAX from Darkness Ablaze. Uh, much easier card to pull, a little bit smaller of a set. The only focus of Obsidian Flames is really the Charizards, uh, unfortunately. In uh, April April 11th, this card had dropped down to a uh, three-month low of $42.77. Now, it's been fairly consistent over the past three months. So you can see at one point in time, it had peaked up to $49.51. It's low point, $42.00 and 77 cents so you're looking at about 15 16 percent of a difference between its three month high and its three month low which is still significant uh but it's just been up and down very cyclical uh movements right now currently sitting at 45 dollars and 39 cents so right in between uh its three month high and three month low if you haven't bought this card yet definitely keep an eye on it i would expect it to continue to fall a little bit maybe below 40 dollars. the pull rates on this much, much different than what we've talked about and what we've seen from a lot of these other special illustration rares that are moving a lot. Pull rate on this one is less than a case. So you're only looking at about 200, I think it was like 170 packs or something to pull a specific unique special illustration rare from Obsidian Flames. So there should be several more copies in existence of a card like this. Now, obviously the, the demand for a Charizard is much, much higher, uh, but with the amount of uh, population that's out there, it'd be very interesting to see what happens with that card moving forward. Here's another card that's going through a very interesting Phase right now, the Altaria EX Paradox Rift is a set that has a lot of special illustration rares. More special, I think it's the same amount of special illustration rares as what we saw in Paldea Evolved. So I guess it does make sense. Pool rates a little bit more difficult for Paradox Rift than Paldea Evolved. So it makes a little bit of sense to see this start trending in the upward direction. But I also think a lot of it is just because of the attention that's being paid to a lot of them uh, and how cheap this card was. It was only $19.09. That was at the end of March. Fairly level up until May. Middle of May is when things started really changing. Jumped up to $43.85 over the past couple weeks and continuing to trend in the upper direction. Uh, currently sitting at that $43.85 mark. Here, here's Chi Yu. We just talked about Chi Yu recently recently from Paldea Evolved. This card recently got bought out. You can call it a buyout. Less quantities available. I think people just started noticing. And unfortunately, again, when that opportunity presents itself, a lot of people like to strike, especially when money is involved. Very flat from March all the way up until May. You can see it hovering right around that $15 mark. Uh, it hit a low point of $14.80. And then at the end of May, once less and less quantities started being available on sites, uh, started really trending upward fast. Now it's sitting at $39.79. So so almost three, almost 200% price growth over the past couple weeks. Crazy to look at. Iron Valiant also doing the same thing like what we saw from Roaring Moon, trending in the upward direction quite a bit. Now, not as big of a percentage shift, uh, but still looking at about 40% of a change between its three-month low and three-month high. You can see it trending in the downward direction up until the end of March. That's where it hit that $25.67 price drop. Iron Valiant, there was a lot of thought that this would be a very good card in competitive play. Didn't really end up coming to fruition uh, because of that. It 
it dropped real quick after release, uh, started growing a little bit at the end of April and then came back down. And then like what we saw from a lot of these other special illustration writers, once more attention got paid to it, end of May started jumping up like crazy. Now it's sitting at $35 and 20 cents and continuing to trend in the up- upward direction. Uh, Miriam, I mean, Scarlet and Violet Base is also being impacted by a lot of this. Here's the Miriam much easier pull rates behind this, right? Like much, much easier. Uh, but Scarlet and Violet Base starting to be included less in collection boxes. Uh, there's still going to be a lot of it out there. Don't get me wrong. And there still are boxes of this set, at least still in distribution. So Scarlet and Violet Base is going to be around for quite some time because this was probably the set that was printed most out of all of the Scarlet and Violet sets. End of March, this card had dropped down to $22.59. Extremely cheap when you consider the fact that this was a $200 card pre-release uh, prior to Scarlet and Violet Base being uh, being released, but because it was so easy to pull, it dropped like a rock super quick. It fell all the way down to $22.59 and then started trending uh, in the upper direction. End of May, it hit that three-month high of $35.19. It's currently sitting at $34.37. Uh, very cool looking card, but again, a little bit easier to pull. Here's the Alakazam EX from Scar- Scarlet and Violet 151. Uh, 151 just has great legs. Like it just continues to just continues to stand the test of time. Now we're going to talk about Pokemon 151 at some point in the near future. Those cards dropping a lot. If we see something like that, what's happening with Pokemon 151? If we see something like that happen with Scarlet and Violet 151, where they pull a Shining Fates, they print the ETBs to oblivion, start pumping out product like crazy, we're going to see a lot of these special illustration writers. A lot of these illustration errors drop. We have not seen a massive reprint or anything like that of Scarlet and Violet 151. Just small restocks here and there. Distributors getting small amounts that they can push out to brick and mortar stores. It seems like every single week there's a little bit of product being put out at Walmart and Best Buy and those places, but nothing massive like what we saw in Japan. And because of that, some of these special illustration errors holding very well. The Alakazam uh, definitely trending in the upper direction. My, end of March, it was sitting at $25.98. Now it's gained about 30% over the past three months currently sitting at $32.67 and continuing to trend upwards here's the Gardevoir EX also from Scarlet and Violet bases no different than what we we're just talking about this will be an interesting one especially with what's going on at the North American International Championships obviously Gardevoir six of the eight spots I mean that's 75 percent of the top eight was uh, it was clogged up by Gardevoir EX. So I know a lot of people are obviously, there's a ton of copies of Gardevoir EX. It was in a starter deck. It's been reprinted in Paldean Fate. So there's a lot of regular arts, a lot of different rarities that are available. Uh, but $17.62 was where this was sitting at the middle of March, relatively flat all the way up until the middle of May, and then started taking off like crazy, almost doubling in price. It's currently sitting at $31.11. Also, this is one of those story cards that a lot of people really like and appreciate with the Ralts and the Curlia. We've seen what's happened with the Perrin. We've seen what's happened with the Growlithe. Uh, very interesting to consider moving forward, but $31.11 continuing continuing to trend upwards. The Garchomp, this is really no different than the Altaria EX that we were talking about before from Paradox Rift. Garchomp, a very popular Pokemon for a lot of people. End of March, it was sitting at that three-month low of $15.95. Again, relatively flat, and then once people started realizing lower quantities available on websites, on TCG Player, started getting bought out like crazy. $27.42 is where it's currently sitting, so almost doubling in price over the past couple of weeks uh parasol lady paradox rift also a lot of paradox rift cards really starting to trend in the upward direction this card was trending downwards quite a bit uh beginning of april it was at its three month low of 15 dollars and 35 cents it started going up a little bit and then came back down in the middle of may and then really started pushing up now it hasn't gained a ton only about 25 percent up from where it was in the middle of april but definitely continuing to trend in that upward direction and finally we have the maridon ex also from scarlet and violet base i I think this is the last one that we're looking at. Again, another card that was very flat for quite some time. It seemed like it had bottomed out at the beginning of May. It hit that three-month low of 1375. Now it's gained about 35, 40% over the past month and a half as more and more attention gets put towards these special illustration errors. It's jumped up to $19.86 and continuing to trend in the upward direction. So if you are a master set collector, if you've been waiting to kind of piece together some of these special illustration errors, there's still a lot of them out there. A lot of really cool looking cards, a lot of beautiful cards that are relatively cheap. Uh, from Scarlet and Violet Base all the way up to Twilight Masquerade. So there's still a lot of options out there. Don't stress out about all of this. Remember, the market is very cyclical, so you see ups and downs all over the place. Very important. Budget yourself. Make the best decision when it comes to spending your collection dollars, but very interesting to see some of these some of these movements that we're seeing on a, a generation that was kind of forgotten about. Not really, not really talked about because there was so much focus on Sword and Shield and on the alternate arts in Sword and Shield. So it's very interesting to see everything that's going on. I hope you enjoyed 
enjoy the content. If you did, please hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a like, leave a comment. It goes a really long way for the algorithm. I say that all the time. Uh, but thank you guys so much just for taking the time. I love you guys. You are amazing. I will be back tomorrow with another video. Till next time. Peace.